And welcome, fellas and bellas, back to the Napoli Ran. I am Raf Biz, joined by my co host, Avek Arabes Soviets, Rafa Rispo. Hey, Ralph Pizarro. Hey, hey, What's we going on? How we are you? It. Yeah, we, we yeah, made I'm, it. So, <laughs> the train was late. I'm sorry, guys. The, yeah, the, chat. The, Mi dispiace. The, I'm the, very the, sorry, chat. But there was, all, you know how those fault. subways are in New York City. No, no, don't worry about you it. You know how they but, go. You know how it is. You, man. Go. you know how it is. It's a daily grind, right, Ralph Pizarro? That's it. That's it. Live, live entertainment, folks. Always something to, uh, Always a joy. But anyway, welcome to everybody in the chat as well as all audio listeners. Let's get this rant on the road. But before we do, please show your support by subscribing to our YouTube channel and be sure to give this episode a like. Yes, and if you've been in the chat, you've been waiting for a while, so I'm sure you did that already. So thank you. Just do it. It's good. It helps everybody. Anyway, guys, yeah. uh, man, big results today. Big result for Napoli. Big result for Inter. Um Napoli take the 15 point lead. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk a little bit about the aftermath of the Cremonese game. We have our beast of the match today, the people's beast today, voted, not really voted, but influenced by yeah, it the was crowd. A, it, was, it, it, it wasn't a vote, it was definitely influenced, but it was an deserved, influence. like coming, long time coming, Ralph, right? I, I mean, I think, uh, definitely. I, think definitely. I, I have a feeling that it was a shout soon. for this guy, and yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, would, uh, there's a good. few guys that it's coming to, right? I mean, and this it was good that yeah. we chose who we chose. This right? was, yeah. I'm glad it was this one because, yeah, we were certainly waiting for it. Um, we got that. And then, you know, with this win thing, it, it, it kind of changes things now or it changes the way we're going to look at the rest of the season. And, and we're going to ask ourselves tonight, as well as the chat, how are we going to handle this rotation now? It's going to be operation rotation. And how are we going to handle – how we feel these teams, how Spalletti going to do, what do we think, what do you think, we'll talk about that, uh, but let's get into the chat, let's say hi to a few people, um, I like this one, Pasquale, I want a rant t-shirt that has a series of world clocks and then one with Napoli time on it, that's like 22 minutes past the hour on all of them, <laughs> yeah, <coughs> we definitely have some really cool t-shirt slash drip ideas um, that will be working on soon but yeah i i agree it's uh it's getting pretty crazy isn't it <laughs> yeah 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 there was one that i saw it was uh well um, while you look for that i just want to uh, while yeah, you look talk. for that i want to thank everybody i want to thank everybody who uh, uh hits us up on our twitter um i see you right we we see you um most recently, Zombo uh, at Ali W R E A L L I W R E. Uh, he took a picture with a Napoli kit, his dog in a Napoli kit. So mm -hmm. um, he tagged us, and it was nice enough to tag us, and it's saying he's on the bandwagon. So thank you, uh, thank you, Zombo. Thank you for everybody who hits us up. There was a couple other people that that messaged me and that like sent some comments and questions. Um, Fraser Robinson's another one. So. Thank you, Fraser. Just to just to show some love to those guys too. They might not uh, get in the chat live, but uh, they come in. So, mm. yeah, it was that. Yeah, he just uh, he just put that in tweet. I retweeted. It was really cool. Always love to see the pets. Yeah, very. Cool. I gotta get. I gotta get some drip for the cat. Maybe you gotta get some drip for your dog, Rafa. Well, we, uh, that's gonna have. I have a dog and a cat, so I'll get both. Uh, yeah, get absolutely, both. absolutely. Drip, yeah. Drip. yeah. Speaking of drip, uh, let's talk about it now. Uh, Big merch shop uh, for Trinopoly.com. Uh, make sure to check it out, guys. Go on to their Twitter. I believe it's pinned up there. It is an order. It's going on for 10 days, so get in fast uh, before the order yes. closes um, and get your Tri-State Napoli drip. Super nice, man. I'm going to love it. I helped with the uh, help with the design a little bit. So we got that going. Me, Chop, Pete. Uh, and Gaetano got it all and together. We had a special, yeah. we had a special person um, model the drip, didn't we, Ralph Pizarro? Yes, yes. Some... Check it out. I couldn't put it. I can't put it live. We had but, some help. Uh, yeah. No, that's okay. Go, okay. go to the, uh, go to the Twitter account or the Instagram account, which is the same name, and you'll see a surprise. Someone is uh, modeling this tri-state drip. It's pretty cool. Someone that's pretty close to Biz, I think, too. Right? Yeah, what yeah. Do you say? I, uh, yeah, yeah. My child. If you, if you catch my drift, drift. <laughs> catch my drift, rant, rant, you'll see it. Can't miss it, guys. Uh, let's talk real quick about Napoli 3, Cremonese 0, the aftermath 
Uh, and I mean, you know, I guess this is kind of like a, a little payback for that Copa game, but it was it was good to see the boys out there running. Um, so get this, full disclosure, guys, full disclosure. Uh, I was working during the game and I was unable to watch it. So I tried to rewatch it and I don't know what was going on with my service, but I was unable to rewatch the Napoli game. Just kept freezing on me. I don't know if it was the internet. I don't know if it's Paramount. I don't want to blame anybody, but I was unable to. Uh, but I caught the highlights. Obviously, I looked at the extended highlights. I caught some of the game, but it, again, it kept pausing, so it wasn't really a great experience. So I had to go with a lot of help from you guys uh, out there talking about the game, uh, taking reactions mm -hmm. from everybody else. So, uh, you know, my judgment might be slightly skewed, but I did see some good things that I wanted to point out. We'll talk about that. Uh, but, you know, we get braces from uh, uh, Cavada. We get a goal from Osinham and our boy Elmas to close this game at three nothing. And wh where do you, what do you, where do you want to start first, uh, Rafa? Like, well, first, before I'm sorry, go ahead. What were you saying? No, where do you want to start first? That's uh, I'm. Oh, you're asking me where we want to start. Okay, hey, let's start with. Uh, well, let's start with the fact that I also couldn't really watch the game too well. <laughs> I mean, I had it on. Uh, we were busy. Did right? anybody watch I the had... game? Let us know. <laughs> Pull you in. <laughs> Here's the deal. I had the fr I had the I had the first half on. I was going to pick up uh, the the lady at the train station. Um, but um, so I, I had it on. So it's not like I didn't see. It. I saw it. I was with it. Um. And what stood out to me right away was how much Chucky was tracking back on defense. Um, I really mm. like to see, especially when he, he, it was like Chucky versus Vasquez. It was like Mexico versus Mexico. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, there was a, there was a point in time where Vasquez, who's a defender, uh, came up to, <laughs> I'm sorry. Gaetano just said, let us know that we won three nil. Just, just in case we, we didn't, because we, we missed the game. Uh, that uh, Al Goody Gaetano too. Happy birthday, President Gaetano. Gaetano. Um, um, but yeah, uh, um, and I, I just really was happy to see Chucky. And I gotta say, you know, uh, he, he, him coming back on defense is something that I like to see from him because it shows a lot of determination, but also, um, you know, Sassuolo, I'm sorry, Cremonese had the ball in our end for the first, like, 14, right. 15 minutes. And, I mean, you know, we had chances, too. I'm not saying we didn't, but but I, I saw Napoli not struggle, but, like, you know, have to deal with some Cremonese press, which I was kind of impressed with, actually. Uh, Ser Nicola uh, um, it was one to, uh, like, highlight the fact that he he kind of did a nice move on two guy, two of our guys. I forgot who, but he I think it was Kvada and Mayuri. But, yeah, I mean, um, you know, pretty pretty tough start, but everything kind of, you know, settled in and we scored our first goal, right? Yeah. No, it seems like uh, – uh, it, it seems from, from what I saw, from what I can understand, it seems like we did well kind of controlling the ball a bit as well we didn't we didn't mm. rush in at times we were we were we were calm we were patient again we we see the brilliant work from Laboca. he got a huge hug uh when he got substituted by uh by, by spalletti yeah. uh, out on, on on the sideline yeah. uh i saw i saw uh some issues on the back door for napoli uh there, there was there were there were some chances created by cremonese mm. uh, still a worry for me now i'm going to talk about d uh, in a little bit i'm not going to quite get into him but you know that that seems to be consistently <clears throat> a little weak for us uh that little back door on 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 d lorenzo's side where you know mm -hmm. I, I, i'm not even sure how this guy didn't get a shot off uh from Cremonese, but you know it was, it was close and and it that seems to be consistent so i was a little worried there um but I did see, I saw Nguisa. And, and if anybody in the chat can help me out here, if anybody saw Nguisa today, what they thought, I'd like to hear your thoughts about him because, you know, quarter one, uh, quarter one, he he won beast of the quarter, uh, Nguisa, because, you know, part of what he was doing was not only he was contributing in on offense, he was dominating in the midfield and he was coming back, uh, backtracking to, to help uh, Di Lorenzo when Di Lorenzo pushed all the way forward. You know, I, I felt like after Zidane 
and, and even right after the World Cup, he slipped a little bit. I I wasn't too impressed with the World Cup either, but he seems to the past two games, he seems to be running a little bit more, a lot more energetic, uh, getting into the game a little bit better. So I, I hope to see that continue because, I mean, this midfield is obviously so important for us and, and what he's able to contribute and Guisa on both ends of the pitch, you know, we need that if if we're going to continue to dominate like this. I don't want to see that slip up uh, because, again, that side on Di Lorenzo sometimes, when we saw Lozano backtracking today, we're going to give him his props. Mm-hmm. But Dilo, uh, I'm sorry, we need Anguisa to kind of like help us on that side and make sure he's he's covering for Dilo when he's, you know, Di Lorenzo when he's all the way up. So uh, th- those are a few things that I took out in the game. And obviously, what the, you know, goes without saying the the link up between you know or or the, the this continued just domination with with Cavada and Osinham and yeah, with Lozano was able to contribute a front three like that. And we kind of said this in the beginning of the season: if the front three, if that's the front three, and they're and that's what they're going to do, I mean, they're they're a complete nightmare for back lines. For the opposition's back line when those three people are on point now. <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. Um Kavada and Osiman, uh, I believe have now a combined um <clears throat> twenty I think it's twenty seven goals between the two of them. Uh seventeen and nine, right? No, so that'd be twenty six. But um uh, they they have I think it was at like coming into the weekend they had like the second most like goal combinations in all of Europe well I won the top five of Europe and um, second behind only um, Erling Holland and Phil Foden at Man City and neither of them scored at the weekend so now Napoli's Osimhen and Kvaraskelia are like the top duo in the top five. Um, that's just something that I don't think anybody, you know, saw coming. Uh, you know, a lot of pundits were were not rating Aussie Man because of his injury history and all that stuff. And look what he's done. And nobody really. I mean, I said he's going to light the league up when you know he came in, but nobody really could have predicted how impactful Fadish Kelia really is. You know, um, right? It's it's insane. Um, you know, and. There's a lot to there's a lot to have, um, you know. There's a lot of Spalletti's um, play. I think that that is a contribution to that. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, I mean, there's there's very much um, a, a connection between those two, which tells me that um, there's a very big chance that they stay for a couple of seasons, you know, when you gel like that, it's hard to, it's hard to like get someone else in to replace that, you know, um, even though we're good at replacing, but yeah, I mean, what Toronto is saying, Kvada and Ossi is better than Mbappe and Messi, which is true factually and statistically. It's true. It's, it's absolutely true. Kvada getting his leg kicked out of the box. Thank God we have Var now. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, that was a really a big mess. The referees weren't the greatest this this game. Uh, you know, you know, ob- obviously it's <laughs> we're we're lucky to be one of the best teams in all of Europe to uh, have to not deal with the referees' blunders. But that was a clear penalty. I did see that. So 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 I did watch. I did see. I like like I was driving. I had my phone propped. I had it on the Bluetooth. I heard. I saw. It's not like you know. I would glance down, I'm paying attention to the road. Of course, mm-hmm. I'm I'm not Napoli in driving. I mean, I was, but <laughs> I'm doing it responsibly, guys. <laughs> but yeah, it's one of the things I saw. Um, but the the Kavadashkilia goal, Ralph. I mean, what a play that was. It's off a corner, right? And um, I think it was Ser Nicolo who tried to like head it out to touch like for another corner and Kvada saved it from going out instead of letting it go, took him on one, one on one, dropped the shoulder and beat him to the right and then nutmegged him pa- and passed the keeper. Right. What a goal. What a goal that, that was win. for his. How does it, you know, not a, like Dude. these are, we've been witnessing some beautiful goals lately, Rafa. I mean, just like mm-hmm. gorgeous goals and, 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 
that was another one. I, I didn't even do that. I mean, like the 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 the, the space. I mean, you're talking about you know a couple inches left to right, or he, even if the goalie had his hand slightly lower, it was a save. But man, he makes that look easy. And boy, yeah, he did. Yeah, he's he certainly did. a beast on this team, without a doubt. And the matchup with Ozzy just again just makes it that much better for us and worse for them because mm -hmm. it's hard to stop. Absolutely, who do you block? absolutely. Who who, who who do you defend, Rafa? I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you know, it's okay. So now that you mentioned that, right, who do you defend? It's funny that you mentioned that okay. because I, I was, I was listening to, while I was working today, I was listening to ESPN FC from yesterday and you had, um, older guy, what's his name? Scottish, forgot his name, coach in the MLS, forgot his name. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, he was on and he was saying something like you, you might want to defend so, so in this case, it's Holland. They were talking about um, um, Manchester City. So, so, so putting putting you know that in into like a Napoli perspective, right? Mm -hmm. you, you might want, as if you're a defender, you might want to defend Holland more than you want to defend the winger. And reason being is that you know where Ossiman or where Holland. He said Holland, but I'm just using Ossiman. You know where Ossiman's going to be at all, all times. He's going to be in front of that net. Right. He's going to try to get. Get to that ball, he's gonna get the, the, the feeding time, right? So right. when you defend that striker, double team that striker, you're leaving a guy like Kratos Gale open or Chuki right. when he's on. I mean, you know, well, we, we, when we you saw have a that guy in... that can break through defenders like Aussie men, you're screwed either way. Like, you know, right. so who do you defend? The answer is it doesn't matter who you defend because you're screwed right. either way, right? You know, it it was it was hard to see because it was just at the very edge of the uh, of the screen. But even when Elmas scored today, and we said it, when oh, Lozano, Ozinem, Cavada on, I mean, that's the triple headed monster right there. Mm -hmm. Elmas makes that run, and he hesitates to pass the through ball to Victor, and instead passes back to Delo. Now I forgot yeah. the guy's name who plays on the the left wing of Cremonese, the one who's covering our right side. Um, my my name slips. It was Vasquez, name. defender. Yeah, yeah defender? that's right. Yeah, yeah, Vasquez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vasquez, yeah. Right. He, he, if you look real quick, he pulls off more to his left to cover Lozano, to watch Lozano, because he's afraid Lozano is going to zip right past them, and he'll have the whole field behind them to, to make a cross, because Lozano's, cross, uh, Lozano's chan cre chances created today were outstanding. So Vasquez was worried about him. And what happened? And you have two guys on OCM. You got two guys on Cavada. Elmas has open space. Yeah. What? What did I miss? The game was just, yesterday. You keep saying today. I just well, I, just I, I had to watch. I had to watch. <laughs> I know. Today, I know. All right. I know. We didn't see it yesterday. I know. Today is the game. I wasn't there yesterday. Yesterday was the game. Man. Today is Monday, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you doing? You sure it's Monday? Oh, that's right. See, the I'm only not, time I remember is Monday is because we have to do the show, or else everything else is one long. It's Monday. So like it's two, Monday. Tuesday to Sunday. It's everything's one long day for me now. But in point. Italia, it's Tuesday. In Italia, it's Italia, Tuesday. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. And in other parts so, of the world, right? Maybe. So maybe whenever the game was, whenever the game was. <laughs> <laughs> Elmas was able to be wide open because again, Lozano's as Lozano, Ozinum come out, everybody's pulling defenders, all these different ways. Lozano, easy ball, turns and shoot, scores. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it's just like when these three guys, when those three front three are on, man, and I'm glad Lozano is kind of like back in his form as the as of the past few games. It it, it feels like Napoli starting to fire on all their cylinders again. And boy, it's uh, we were waiting for this, Rafa, weren't we? We we were kind of like, all right, it's gonna be a little bit of a slow start coming in. We knew that, we saw it, but it's kind of like back to business for Napoli a little bit, and and it's just uh, yeah, it's it's back to business for Napoli. Um, I did also want to mention we talked about this the third goal. I was gonna I was gonna reference the third goal too about how how the one yesterday. Lorenzo's to, Yesterday's yeah, goal. Not the one today, because there was no third goal today. There was no third T goal. Today there's only there's only one goal between two two four teams today. So yeah, so right, you know. right, right. <laughs> um I think Inter no, the, only had uh, one goal today and they tied, right? No, and they dropped no that was, no, was today. They had one goal today to win. Yeah, one goal. And they didn't win. They tied. <laughs> one goal, one point. No, 
The one goal today came from Verona. They beat Sassu- uh, some do- uh, no, they beat Salernitana. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, the the second goal was <laughs> tremendous as well. Corner kick. Di Lorenzo gets a header on it. Di Lorenzo's all over the place too. That's another thing we may yeah. talk so, about. But I, I do want to talk about it. Yeah, it gets saved. The keeper, Kim, picks up the the header. Uh, you know, and and there's a defensive mess, right? And right. it looks like Kim's ball is going in, but Aussie Man's right there just to tap it in, just in no. case. Just God forbid, there's a goal line clearance because, like I said, it was a mess in the box. There was a bunch of defenders right. around, and Aussie Man has the wherewithal to be like, you know what? Let me just ensure no, that this yeah. goes in. You know oh yeah, I mean? no, no, that's his job. That's you, honestly, by yeah. if you look at one of the angles, it it almost looked like as if that ball was kind of heading straight to the keeper, and he might have been able to kind of grab it and and keep right. and preventing it right. from from crossing the line. But Osin him, I think, recognized that he re, he he kind of like darted right in and wasn't much space, but he darted in as quick as possible. And once again, Kim, we said this last week or the week prior. No, not last week. I wasn't here, but the week before that, Rafa, uh, when I. Kim again just putting his body on the line to help the team, whether it was defensively, offensively, just yeah. beasting it in there, and uh, you know, yeah. and easy money for Victor Osin and just being where he needs mm-hmm. to be. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I love to see it, but I, I do want to talk about Delo. Let's get to him before we get to the beast of the match because I'm calling this one on the Delo. Delo, I was looking up, you know, all right, we've questioned his some of his defensive. Uh, abilities to begin in the season. We thought maybe he had some troubles on the one-on-one. Uh, certainly in the style of Napoli right now, he is way forward, contributing on the offense. So a lot of times, you know, we, we have that risk of not having somebody there to cover. Typically, maybe we'll see Politano. We saw Lozano today. We used to see Anguisa kind of covering that, so we were okay. D'Lo was able to take that risk because he knew he had somebody behind him. Um, mm-hmm. But either way, Despite what you may think on of him on defense, I was really looking at him as to how he contributes on our offense, and and there he's an absolute beast. He is a, just a, he's like another midfielder for this team. And I was looking up mm-hmm. tw- you thirty-one. Have a, you have a crazy stat, don't you? Yeah, there it is. Well, th- thirty-one. So I was looking it up. He he's he he's in like the top. He's number sixteen for chances created in the league, tied with Rafael Leal, nonetheless. For 31 wow. chances created. Wow. Yeah. For 31 wow. chances created, right? And there's only like two or three yeah. other defensemen in the top 15 for chances created, Mario Reed yeah. being one of them, uh, that, that have as much or more more chances created. And now that he has, in fact, he has more than Lozano and Palatano as far as chances mm. created. So, I mean, that's My, just crazy. I saw just people. throw him up in the... <laughs> in the yeah. 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 Crazy. Yeah, exactly. It's it's just crazy to me what he provides on offense and how many times and, and think about it even the chances that maybe Palatano Lozano have probably started from Di Lorenzo, and then they were crossing the ball or something. So I mm-hmm. I I just think he's a powerhouse on the offense for us, man. He really contributes to this offense sometimes more than we give him credit to. He's always there. He's always doing something for us, man. He's like another midfielder, right? Without a doubt. You know, you know what I like? I like that we have coverage in every area, right? If, if we're lacking mm-hmm. one spot, we've got coverage everywhere, right? So, like, not saying that Lozano was lacking at all because he had a fantastic match. But what I'm saying is if if the right wing isn't really, like, doing something or they're out of position or what have you from Guatemala, Francisco Marucci, wow, thank you very much for coming in. That's awesome. Ciao. Um, but if, if, the, if the, you know, if the right wingers... <laughs> Either Politano or Lozano are lacking or out of position. Di Lorenzo's f- f- coming in to to supply crosses and to supply. Mm-hmm. I saw the one. I think in the first half it was uh, after Cavada scored his first goal. It was like a give and go where where Di Lorenzo like Cavada gave to Di Lorenzo. Di Lorenzo ended up crossing into to Cavada and Cavada headed the ball and missed by not yeah, very much. And he missed right. and and right. yeah, That's not insane. very much. But but like. Like the contributions that Lorenzo is giving us is 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 overlooked in a lot of ways, I think. Um, because when you when you talk about Di Lorenzo, you mix him in with the defense, and this is a defense that's only given up 15 goals this season in 22 matches, which is probably Napoli 
record. Like I, I'd have to go back and check, but I, I do remember in the Ritorno of the 17-18 season, or might have been the 16-17 season. It was the season Mertens went. Actually, it was 16-17. Um, Napoli had only given up like 17 goals in the Ritorno. So in, in, in 19 matches, it was 17 goals. And I was, I remember being super impressed by that. We've mm-hmm. only given up 15 goals all season long. And mm-hmm. that's impressive. That's amazing. Given that Medet was not going to, was not supposed to be the, right. the, the, um, you know, the replacement for Ospina and that we lost Koulibaly. Oh my gosh! Who would have thought that we would have this kind of defense? That's right. that's got Medet's got like ten clean sheets now, and right. and we've only given up fifteen goals. It's amazing. It's it's it's. I think second. I know it's second to Barcelona, who's given up seven all season. But I mean, fifteen is outstanding for Serie A. Outstanding for the for this type of Serie A, where it's very offensive now. Very right. very uh very very impressive. No, it's 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 big time what's going on with our defense, and I think that uh, even with the help with our with our midfield too, you know that they, you know, I, I want to give them the, the the credit there. But um, I love let's this get with on. Sal just roll I, really quickly. I don't know if you put this up. This one, yeah, Giovanni Di Lorenzo is worth forty million euro, but Jonathan of Lawrence. In the Premier League is worth 400 million euro. That's a that is like a goat, <laughs> a goat quote. <laughs> beast of the quote, beast of the chat, beast of the chat, beast of the chat. Of the chat. Of the chat. Of the chat. I like that. That was really I good. I think we got to start yeah. awarding beast of the chat from now on, Rafa. I mean, these guys are Yo, loyal, that's a great shout. loyal viewers. I also, and I, I want to shout out. I want to shout out Antonio Akramone too because uh, you know he's always asking when the rain's coming and mm-hmm. on Twitter and I, I I like that so ciao Antonio what's going on um, uh, always prefer Gil- Moretto versus- actually Gilberto's in here too yesterday was his birthday I got him a nice Happy gift birthday uh, check 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 my uh, check my my socials for that but yeah let's move on man who, who, who we got let's a piece go- of the match don't we? we got a piece of the match guys yeah this one listen again I couldn't really pass fair judgment to pick a beast so i really went with a few accounts that i follow a few friends that i speak with and i decided to do that i spoke about it with raf he was cool with it so uh yeah let us know in the chat crazy. guys who was your beast of the match we're about to show you ours let's go for it No, you did not miss it, Carmelo Frazetto, because here it is, Beast of the Match, Match Day 22, Napoli Cremese, Irving, Chucky, Lezano. Oh, Well-deserved, Ralph. Well-deserved. Uh, foot mob rating of 8.3. Just missed Man of the Match by 0.1 points. Di Lorenzo with uh, Man of the Match from, um, from foot mob. But player facts, Irving Lozano completed the most dribbles with five and had the most tackles with three. Now, when you got an offensive guy making tackles and drawing fouls to draw yellow cards, because that's another thing he did against yeah. Vasquez. He got Vasquez to tackle him, got him the yellow, and he suspended for the next game. So this Chucky Lozano is a whiz at that and always has been, right? And I think that, you know, with an 82% pass accuracy, uh, you know, he played 83 minutes. He came out for, I forgot who he came out for, but he came out in the 83rd. You know, um, five of five success. That's another thing is the dribbles. Five dribbles is the most in the match. And I know. Hey, there you go, Gil. This is this one is for Gil, Chucky, baby. For Gil. Uh, Happy birthday, and, Gil. And I'll tell you what, I, I, I'll spoil it to those who are listening and maybe not watching or can't access uh, social media. I got Gil. Well, I didn't get Gil. the point is I gave Gil like gifted Gil a Chucky Lozano jersey signed. Which oh. he was floored with, and um, nice. uh, yesterday was his birthday. Uh, we watched the Super Bowl together. We were gonna watch the Napoli game together, but you know schedules change with Ali's train, and I think it's just apropos for Chucky Lozano to be beast of the match the day of. Gil's birthday. I, I I think it just comes full circle. That's not why we picked him. Chucky Lozano, let me tell you something. 
for for a guy who's been this close a few times this season, especially two yeah. games ago, right? Yeah, two we games a little, ago. We caught a little flack for that too. We but, did, right. we did, and I thought he should have been beast. It might have been another match where I thought he should have been beast, and we gave it to elsewhere, right? And then last game against against um, uh, Spezia, he didn't have a a great match. He had an okay match. Came off at the half for Politano. That's mm-hmm. when we started getting the goals and all that stuff. So it was like, ah, Chucky's very inconsistent. No, this game he came in showed that he's actually in form. And and I be- you know, I believe he gave so much heart. And that's something you can't take away from. You could talk, you could say, you know, maybe he has a sloppy first touch. Maybe he's, you know, eye for goal is a little off. He's taking shots that are getting saved, blah, blah, blah. Maybe he should try the keeper. Those are things that you have to consider. But you never, ever see Chuki, especially lately, because maybe at first it wasn't like this. But I think Chuki Lozano has the heart the size of freaking the tri state. And, mm-hmm. and, he shows it almost every game this time around. Now, whether that's he wants to go to a new team and is impressing or he's just giving it his all because this entire team is giving it their all for the sake of what's coming, right? right. Now, Chucky Lozano yesterday was just outstanding. And and like I said that earlier, that tackle on Vasquez was just, 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 just great. Beast of the match, well-deserved uh, with a chef's kiss, right? Like the jersey Shut he's good. got on. <laughs> I also wore red because they it's Valentine's Day tomorrow. They wore the white and reds yesterday. So there you mm, go. There you go. Uh, um, this is a good shout too, though. Joe Biz. Joe Biz, the brother of Raph Biz. Brother Biz says, Biz. my pick for Beast would have been Kvanaskalia, who on this 22nd week scored his 22nd uh Scored on his 22nd his birthday, birthday in the 22nd minute. That is beastie. Minute. It's beastie. It is beastie. It was beastie. But I, th- I think Lozano deserves it this week. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I, I, I give the nod to Lozano because we kind of said, like, he's going to get it soon. This was a few weeks ago. It's like, if he continues his work rate, he'll get it. And, again, not that Cavada isn't a beast. They're always in a, These guys are, like, full-fledged beasts. The beast. They're They're full, yeah, the whole team beast. beast. I mean, what Lobotka did, what what you know, what Dilo did, Rui even. I mean, mm. it's Kim, good to say, Kim, yeah, Kim, Kim, Kim was all over the place. Kim, it's like who who do you pick? It's been this has been the hardest season for us to choose these things, and it, but you want to give it to the guy who who just showed back up. We need a presence like that in the right wing. Uh, we, we saw how much better he did with his ball control, with his touches. He was able to beat his defender. He was able to create crosses we need that from the right wing we need that uh and not just from De Lorenzo. we need it from our winger so i hope he keeps up this form and if it comes now great because it's going to come right when we need it so mm-hmm. uh, to uh, uh chuck lozano for beast of the match thank you thank you very much thank you very much and shout out to you for the people who uh kind of influenced us to pick that all right thank you yes thank you very much Pasquale says Valentine kits redeemed after that match. Yeah. Oh yes, they are. Yes, they are. It's funny. I texted. Uh, I texted Mate. Uh, I'm sorry. I texted Marco Messina and I said, "Hey, use this if you guys want." But um, I think it's pretty funny that Napoli are wearing their Valentine's Day kits, and mm-hmm. the only other time they wore them were was at the Maradona against Cremonese in the Coppa Italia, and Cremonese wore the same kits they wore in the Coppa Italia yesterday as well. So I thought that was real funny how the the tale of the two matches were so different, right? Cremonese in Coppa Italia, they've got four wins in Coppa Italia, and um, uh, they have zero in Serie A, which is not a reflection of how they play. They can't buy a win in Serie A, but it's not because they're that bad. I I think they're probably one of the better teams that has ever had as little points as they have in Serie A. They they really play hard and I like them a lot and I'll, it'll be sad to see them go down, but won't it be weird to see them win Coppa Italia and get relegated and they get to play in the Europa League? Europa League? That'll be something. <laughs> yeah, that'll be interesting. That'll I'm be actually, I'm really pulling any, for them. Any, anything, I, I yeah, right. And anything can happen this season. Anything can happen. Yeah. 
Uh, I would love look, for them to win. Imagine that, bro. Napoli, Cremonese, Supercoppa, Cremonese is in City of B, but are also in the way for Europa League. You, because they imagine they wear the same. The game comes and then maybe they wear their same jerseys again. That would oh, be, that is hilarious, man. Awesome. That would be so funny, bro. That would be so funny. But but yeah, but anything can happen. And 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 this weekend, Napoli went up plus fifteen. So it kind of oh. begs the question. Of Grazie like, Sampdoria. Grazie Sampdoria. Seriously, thank you for that. But it begs the question. It's like, all right, so what do we do now? What does Spalletti do now? It's operation rotation because we have the Champions League coming up in, in, a, in just a few days. Uh, and then, of course, like the, the rest of the league, you know, we have Sassuolo coming up. How are we going to manage this? How do you think Spalletti manages or at the very least, what would you want to see? Um We've seen kind of Spalletti rotate heavy for the Coppa Italia. I don't think he's going to do anything like that for any of these games. I mean, at the very least, maybe three, four max as far yeah. as changes goes, if we were to see something. And that's on a game where maybe, I don't know, maybe a smaller game c- coming up or, or or after a couple wins or right before a Champions League game. And and that's the only time I see it, Rafa. But I'm going to, you know, I want to extend this, this, this rant to the chat and as well as to you, and we'll wrap up the show there. Uh, we'll, we'll hang out for another 10 minutes or so, but Rafa, how you, how do you expect, how do you expect Spalletti to manage this bench and what, what, or what do you want to see from Spalletti like for the decisions? Well, so here's the thing, right? And we were talking about this segment and we were talking about it considering Napoli would be up 13 points because nobody in anywhere thought that. Sampdoria were going to get points on Inter, right? Especially mm-hmm. how great Inter had been playing s- 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 uh, lately. Um, but now Napoli are up 15 points. That's a full five matches, Ralph, right? So I think what I would have said if Inter had won was lightly rotate for the Sassuolo match and go hard in the Champions League. Now I think Napoli should more heavily rotate against Sassuolo. However, Napoli against Sassuolo, especially at the Mape, is a very, very tough place for us to go. It's tough, man. In the past 20 matches between Sassuolo and Napoli, never mind just at the Mape, all together, right? We're 11 wins, 7 draws, and 2 losses, right? Which is pretty good when you think about it. But those 7 draws... Uh, 20 uh, December 2021 at Sassuolo 2 2, March 2021 at Sassuolo 3 3. You know, we won uh, 2 to 1. That was that Elmas game winner with uh, with um, with uh, Gattuso as the manager, but before that, 1 1, 1 1, 2 2, you know, 2 1 loss, uh, you know, um, only a 1 0. So, like, it's hard, it's difficult. That's a difficult. Uh, a place to go, notwithstanding the fact that they're on pretty, uh, they're on a pretty good stretch of, of matches. They're on a decent stretch, but the last win before the stretch was home versus Verona, two to one. Five days after that, they lost to us four nil at not at the Maradona. That was the, that was the Aussie men hat trick, right? And that started an eight game winless streak. And that last match in the winless streak was a 1-1 versus Monza, but that started a four-match unbeaten run, including against Milan at the San Siro, 5-2, right? And against Atalanta, 1-0. They held Atalanta to no goals, which is rare because they score their machine. They just drew Udinese 2-2 uh, in Udine. So this is kind of like a double-edged sword, right? Are you going to rotate heavily for Sassuolo, knowing that, Champions League is coming next Tuesday because our game is Friday, 245 CBS uh, Sports Network for everybody. It's not just Paramount Plus. It's on CBS Sports Network. But what do you do, right? For me, I think we have a big enough lead. Let's say something happens and we slip just a bit against Sassuolo, a draw or even a loss, right? Mm -hmm. At worst, we're 12 points ahead. At Mm -hmm. worst. Okay? At worst. I really want Napoli to m- progress from this round of the Champions League. A- I know how everybody is saying things like, oh, anything in the Champions League from now is a bonus. Michele Borelli on Shadow of Vesuvio, um, Dr. Henry Bell asked him what, what he thought. 
He said anything from here is a bonus in the Champions League. And he even went on record saying, and I'm going to call him out for this. Michele, if you're watching or listening, which you're probably not because you don't. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think uh, he said what he said. I listen was, to you, oh, Michele. Damn it. True. I'm going to point this out to him, Ralph. Don't worry about it. I, I got yeah, us. All right. But, 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 because, but, but I told him earlier, I'm calling you out, brother. Because he said, I almost don't want to win. He said a small part of him almost doesn't want to win the Champions League because it will diminish what is coming with the Scudetto. It would sort of diminish it. Like like it would offset the other one. Like we've waited so long for this Scudetto, but winning the Champions League would sort of diminish the accomplishment and vice versa. Like the Scudetto would diminish the Champions League. I completely disagree. And Mm -hmm. I want to win everything. Now, the only reason why Why I think it would be the only reason why I think it would be a good idea or not a good idea, but a good thing for Napoli to like come short, close, but short, what would be motivation for the players to resign? Ossiman wants to get paid. Kvada is going to get an extension. You know, that's coming. All these players, they might get to get that taste of glory with the Scudetto and come so close for the Champions League, knowing you can do that. You can do it. This team is rated number one by CBS Sports and the power rankings for the Champions League. They have climbed two places to number one. That's amazing. They're saying title or bust for Napoli or Man City. And then everyone else is kind of falling down the the pecking line, right? And in my opinion, in my opinion, after, after the round of 16, we've never been past the round of 16. Right. So anything after that for me is a bonus. I do want to win the Champions League, but if we win the Scudetto, I'm not going to be upset that we made the quarterfinals, semifinals, etc. Right. So for me, for this match, I'm rotating a little heavier than I would have had Inter won against Sassuolo Friday, knowing they're a tough team. But also knowing I'm not rotating like we did in Coppa Italia, and this is still Serie A. These players yeah. on the bench are also very determined. We know that. Elmas scores off the bench. Simeone, we know what he could do. Raspadori is a gem, and Dombele is a beast. You know these players have that goal in mind. Coppa Italia was an afterthought, guys. Let's just be real. I love. Co- I want to win Coppa Italia. I want to win everything. I want to have I want to have this again, right? But right. But the thing is, the thing is, is that we got those players that wanted playing time, their playing time, and it would have been nice to progress there because we could have gotten the bench more more playing time. But I think now healthy rotation is going to be great for yeah. um, for this team because now the more we're in the Champions League, the more we have to rotate. That means the more the bench is relied on, and this bench could do it, guys. But I right. mean, like the five five changes at most – and it could, let's not forget, we got Berezinski to cover Di Lorenzo, who was Sampdoria captain, and Golini on the bench for Medet. We're covered. So it, it, in a roundabout way, for this specific match, I want to I wanna have a, 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 a nice, healthy rotation, not a heavy one, but a healthy one, and go all in on the Champions League in this round against Frankfurt, a team we, we can't have – the group stage that we had against against Liverpool, Ajax, Rangers, and then just kind of crap the bed against Frankfurt. We got to show Frankfurt, you know, we're the best team in Europe. Even though yep. they're doing really well in the Bundesliga themselves, they are, I have to say. But they didn't do that well last season, and they got rid of a lot of star players. And they, they finished, I think, seventh. They were 11th at one point. The way they got into the Champions League was winning the Europa League. Hmm. So we have to show... Frankfurt that yo we're coming and we're Napoli and we're not going to back down. I know we got I know we have a Scudetto to win, but we're not backing down in Europe either. It's time, guys, it's time. I've said this so many times. This is the time to make it make Europe a priority. We have to show these guys that we're a European powerhouse. Look at all the attention that we're getting from everywhere. It's amazing. And that's what we have to do. Rafa I'm- you know, I was re- I was reading what some of the people were saying in the chat, and there was one particular I like Gaetano mentioned about making sure Raspadori gets these extra minutes. Now, 
depending on what we do to the league, or, or <laughs> depending on what we do to the league, we're gonna destroy the league. No, but depending on on the next few few results, if we're gonna continue to have this comfortable cushion, I think it's safe to make, like you said, these healthy rotations in the campionato, and you know, give time to people who don't get as much minutes to play. Um, but I I think we do rely on our starters. Let them try to try to secure the lead and then and then have our bench kind of put the nail in the coffin which is what we've been seeing for most of the season so mm -hmm. i say avanti cosi nothing too heavy nothing too heavy because healthy, it doesn't not heavy right healthy. no no no, no. i'm and i'm saying like i'm with you there nothing too heavy mm -hmm. i don't want to see anything too heavy because i don't think that works for us and when we've done mm -hmm. it we then we didn't really get the result that we wanted we didn't get the look that we wanted so um, again, you got guys like Elmas who could now play anywhere, almost anywhere on the field. You got Indembele who can, who can bring a big spark of energy when you need it. You want to give Zelensky a rest. Um, my biggest concern is one using Raspadori because I think we could, by the way, don't forget Simeone, you know, I'm sure he's going to get his time in champions league. I'm, I'm sure that's what Spalletti is saving him uh, mm -hmm. for. And these, any one of those guys can come in and make a difference on the field and give OCM some rest. So that's good. We can give Cavada rest. So that's great. The midfield can come in and give Lobotka rest and or guys like Anguisa. Uh and and that's what I want to see is to make sure those guys are staying healthy. It's I think it's crucial especially for Lobotka that we keep them healthy as possible and make sure we're not going to tire them out. The last thing I want to see is these guys burnt out by the end of the yeah. season. There's no reason for that. We have the we have the manpower. Use it wisely. I think that's I think Spalletti will, but use it wisely. And why not make a push? Yeah, I disagree with Michele. And I get it because we want that. I, I think no matter what, I think no matter what, Napoli Dani want this scudetto. No matter what, over anything. Mm -hmm. I honestly, mm -hmm. even over champions up to a certain degree, you know. But if if you know, we're not talking about where we're up four points in the league. We're up 15 at this point. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. this is the time where you take a little bit of a risk. You could. You have mm -hmm. enough cushion. You have enough cushion to take a risk. And if things are not working, well, you know, make sure you focus on at least winning one trophy. But here's the deal. Napoli still have to prove themselves. Despite them getting all this hype, they still have to prove themselves. I want to see them beat Frankfurt, go to the next round, and I'm going to give them just a little bit more of my faith just a little bit more of my credibility. They have to prove it to me still. They've proven a lot so far. They're on a historic run. And maybe at the end of the season, we're going to be talking about, wow, you know, look what they've accomplished. But for now, step by step. And I don't think Frankfurt, I don't think any game at this point is going to be an easy game for Napoli. You it's know, not. Frankfurt, Frankfurt, Frankfurt is like nothing. You're is right. Fr Frankfurt is in sixth place in the Bundesliga, but it's. The like the 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 distance between six and first is only eight points. You know what I mean? Right. He they're 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 like two points out of the Champions League spaces. It's it's not like they are you know a bunch of bums. They're a good team. They're the Europa right. League champions. We have to respect that. So taking them lightly, though, in my see, that's what I'm saying. Taking them lightly no. wouldn't be the way to go. I think, like you said, prove it. But. Another another really quick point, and then, we, and then we can get out of here. The Frankfurt uh, match is on the twenty first, right? Then we yeah. have Emp on the twenty fifth, right? In Empoli. Then we have Lazio on March third. Uh, then we have Atalanta. Uh, well, that's a you know that's an eight day gap. Man. Both of those games are at the Maradona, and then we have Frankfurt at the Maradona. So we have three games in about twelve days at the Maradona. L but it's Lazio, very difficult. Atalanta, extremely difficult. And Frankfurt. So I want to build a big enough lead against Frankfurt in the first leg in Germany to be comfortable to maybe rotate against Frankfurt then because we're going to have to use our star power against those big heavy hitters before the second leg of Frankfurt. Perfect. There, guys, let's get a fourth and hopefully going in the chat, man. We had a fun show. Sorry, I was out last week. I was obviously uh, I had okay, to do a few biz, things. Everybody crazy week, off, but my friend. But let me tell you, I couldn't wait to get back. I'm so happy, and especially under these circumstances today, after what we witnessed this weekend, man, 
uh, it's, it's 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 just it's just crazy it's just crazy to see and yes i cannot wait for the champions league man I, i'm just looking forward to all these new challenges rafa you know yeah um uh -huh. and i'm just looking forward to watching now and, and and some more meets coming up the weather's getting warmer so many good yeah. things to forward to man. Speaking of meets coming up, uh, we've had three that are confirmed. I'm only going to talk about the first one right now. We'll talk about the next one next week. But Empoli Napoli on Saturday, February 25th at La Luna in Nutley, New Jersey. That's a 12 o'clock start. Try to get there at 1130-ish. It's not as crazy as um, Ribalta is, but let's try to get there a little earlier. Get the TV at least on lead. At least until we show up, you know, and then <laughs> get a nice right? Get a nice yeah, little calamari, right? Yeah, calamari. I know you, Ralph. The calamari. Yeah, love the calamari. Yeah, love join that. us. Join us. Uh, Empoli, Napoli, the 25th, Nutley, New Jersey, La Luna. Um, DM us at try underscore Napoli Club on e any social media outlet you want to for more information. And uh, that's it. There you go. Word up. Uh, don't forget to uh, drop by the uh, Try Not Please State, Try State Now Please Club uh, Twitter, uh, and 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 buy a T-shirt, man. Support the club, yo. Get some buy drip. a T-shirt. Nice. All right. Uh, Go to the Napoli Rant too. Napoli Rant Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the grams, all the good stuff, guys. Uh, but great show, Raf. Thank you again to Thank the you, chat and as well as all the audio listeners. Um, until next time, we'll be here next Monday. But until then, Fort Sinopoli, sempre, guys. Sempre. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. ciao.